When designing scientific experiments, it is very important to constrain or otherwise control variables. The goal is to prevent unimportant circumstances from distorting analyses and introducing misleading statistical artifacts. In the ideal experiment, all variables are tightly constrained. In an effort to approximate this ideal, wet lab researchers carefully control the experiment environment, design their methods to avoid batch effects and keep tabs on every ingredient of their experiments, how it was sourced or synthesized, when it was added, at what temperature it was stored and so on. When done right, this allows findings to be shared with the scientific community in the knowledge that others will be able to repeat the experiments and, and hopefully confirm the conclusions. In short, to repeat an experiment we first need to be able to reproduce or recreate its full environment. Now this is not only true for wet lab experiments, but also for experiments and analyses involving computers. To repeat a computer-supported experiment, we need to first reproduce its software environment. This could be on the same computer a few months later, on an HPC cluster at the same institute, or even at a different site in the lab of someone building upon your work. The point is, we need to be able to capture all relevant state on one machine and be able to recreate it somewhere else. Now, how hard could this possibly be? As it turns out, the answer is very. Software is much more complex than we like to think. A real-life genomics analysis pipeline can consist of hundreds of applications and libraries that affect its behavior. What you see here are dozens of interconnected software packages. A package could be a software library or an application. Changes to any of these packages could be significant, and yet this is just a tiny fraction of the complexity of a real-life genomics pipeline. For software authors, it is not feasible to record every version and configuration manually. Likewise, for users, it would not be feasible to follow manual instructions for hundreds of applications and libraries. At this point, I expect some of you to wonder why I'm saying this. Don't we already have a solution to this problem? A common approach is to shrink-wrap the environment and distribute it as a so-called container. Another term that could be used is application bundle or virtual disk containing the software and its dependencies. While this makes it much easier to install or deploy an application, it doesn't help us to recreate the environment independently, exactly or with deliberate fine-grained modifications. We don't only want to recreate an environment, but we may want to have the option of implementing specific changes without having anything else in the environment change. When container images are built, they modify or extend existing third-party images by fetching network resources that are not guaranteed to be fixed. Building a container from a Docker file on one day and again a month later will usually result in very different containers. Containers are opaque. They are much like a smoothie. You can't really say much about the ingredients when all you have is the finished product. You have no guarantee that the binary you have really corresponds to the source code that you want. Considering that we are increasingly processing personal data in the coming age of personalized medicine, we have a responsibility to pay close attention to what exactly our container smoothies are made of. Of course, differences don't have to be malicious. In fact, when you build the same software on different machines or on the same computer at different times, it is not uncommon that you get two different binaries and you can't really tell why. These problems of reproducibility, usability, and the usability of reproducibility were on our minds when our research group started building a collection of genomics pipelines called PIGS. PIGS stands for Pipelines in Genomics. The pipelines that are part of PIGS were designed to automate the exploratory analysis of common kinds of datasets. This includes RNA-seq, ChIP-seq, single-cell RNA-seq, and bisulfide sequencing datasets. We are currently working on supporting even more kinds of sequencing data, such as attack-seq or nanopore datasets. Under the hood, the pipelines connect proven bioinformatics tools with the help of a workflow scheduler called SnakeMake. 
Here's a simplified workflow diagram for one of the pipelines that processes ChIP-seq datasets. So on the left, you see a pre-processing step where the read quality is improved by trimming. Next, the reads are aligned to a reference. And after that, quality metrics are computed with FastQC, MultiQC, and a few R scripts using packages from Bioconductor and CRAN. Other steps include peak calling, quality control, and peak annotation. Now, the users don't need to know any of this. We wanted to empower our friends in the wet lab, who are not bioinformaticians, to see patterns in their own data, even without the help of experienced bioinformaticians. To this end, all pipelines provide a consistent and intuitive interface to users. The only inputs to the pipelines, other than the raw data, are a sample sheet describing the experimental design and a settings file to overwrite defaults. As its output, it generates an HTML report with interactive plots. For advanced users who want to tweak the output for publications, it also generates R session files. We wanted the pipelines to be easily installed. We also wanted to guarantee that any two users installing the pipelines will get bit for bit the same software, without having to impose tedious reproducibility protocols and without resorting to low-level application bundles. For this important task, we picked a tool called GNU Geeks. Geeks is a general purpose software package manager that is designed with reproducibility in mind. It is not a special bioinformatics software system. It just so happens that its design is exactly what we need in computational science. Geeks provides a domain-specific language that enables the user community to comprehensively describe complex software environments recursively. Geeks evaluates this description by building each package in a clean, isolated environment that contains only declared dependencies and nothing more, not even core system libraries. It does so for the target package and for all of its dependencies recursively. With this mechanism, there cannot be any ambiguity. A recursive package definition in Geeks describes the software environment comprehensively as a graph with zero degrees of freedom. All software variables are constrained. This means that when you use the same version of Geeks to build a piece of software twice on different computers, running different operating systems at different points in time, you will get the same binary, bit for bit. If, if not, that's a bug. Geeks provides source to binary transparency. We packaged pigs and its dependencies for Geeks so that it can be installed reproducibly with just a single command you saw before. But you don't have to use Geeks to use pigs. Geeks can also export complete software environments reproducibly as Docker or Singularity flavored bundles. If someone gives you one of these smoothies, you don't need to trust them. Geeks makes it trivial to rebuild and verify them. We built all of the pigs pipelines and the more than 300 runtime dependencies repeatedly on very different machines to see to what degree Geeks can guarantee that the generated binaries are identical. While doing this, we found a handful of minor reproducibility bugs, but close to 98% of all packages were bit for bit the same. That's a very high number and will get better as the community removes sources of non-determinism from packages. Okay, let's recap. When doing science with computers, we must constrain software variables. Containers are not the kind of solution that we want because they're not transparent. Think of the smoothie. Geeks, however, builds software reproducibly and transparently. Our work on pigs demonstrates that geeks can make reproducibility easy. The ability to recreate an environment bit for bit does not have to be at odds with usability. And finally, we developed these pipelines to bring analysis of genomics data to people who are not bioinformaticians. We hope that you'll give it a try too.